the Peter and Paul Fortress in St. Petersburg, the beautiful city on the Neva River, founded by Tsar Peter the Great in the early 1700s to give Russia a better seaport. The city center suffers from a lot of motor traffic that continues day and night. The main street, Nevsky Prospect, has eight lanes for motor traffic and it is still congested. When you see young people who think it is fun to drive up and down here on a Saturday night playing loud music while sitting on their cars and waving flags, you know you are in a car-oriented society. It is a hostile environment to cycling, but even here there are brave people who do that. Although some prefer the relative safety of the sidewalk, these cyclists rather deal with pedestrians than with motor traffic, and who can blame them? When you have the choice to ride away from traffic or at just an arm's length from big buses, I would also choose that sidewalk. Cycling is clearly not yet seen or used as transport from A to B. There is a shared bike system, but I only saw people using the bikes in a city park, where you could also see that there is indeed a latent demand for cycling in this city. That is why the organization Felicipedizatia organized a cycle tour in St. Petersburg. People gathered at the Palace Square in front of the Hermitage in the former Winter Palace. The people were asked to strictly follow all traffic rules and to cycle only two abreast. And after the parade was carefully positioned, the tour could start. The foreign riders were in the front, so we could almost experience what it was like to ride in Russian traffic, but with a whole lot of people directly behind us. Cars passed us tight and fast. But the tour was fun and very visible. We rode through a lot of very wide streets, which, the authorities think, are too narrow for cycling infrastructure. Apparently, they are not too narrow for multiple lanes for motor traffic. Lanes so wide that traffic is invited to drive at high speeds, much higher than the speed limit. The tour ended in a beautiful park where people talked admired and tested each other's bikes and just had a good time. But here it became clear that cycling is still a subculture that not everybody in society will be able to identify with. It would be better if even more ordinary people would participate in events like these. If politicians see that cycling is supported by a broad group in society, they are more willing to listen to the demands of such a group. So you need more ordinary people of all age groups to show that cycling is a very normal thing to do. <laughs> Seeing more families and children would help even better. People got buttons which they gladly accepted so they can show they too want better cycling in St. Petersburg. <laughs> <laughs> to help raise funds, a range of artists had made posters to promote cycling that were auctioned off. They had a starting price of just 10 rubles, but some made as much as 600 rubles. There was a very positive vibe. But after the picnic, everybody had to go back into the city back into an environment that is not so positive for cycling. In a city that would benefit so much if there was more cycling and thus less motor traffic. But before that happens, there is still a very long way to go.